The two brothers finally reunite again after the sudden death of their grandfather. Thinking about what to do with their late grandfather's property, the two discover the horrifying truth about his property and the cause of his death. How will they deal with these revelations? Let's find out in the 2023 Australian film, Devil Beneath. One night, an old man named Clyde is running in the woods while being chased by an unseen creature. As Clyde looks at a map to confirm if he is in the right place, he is cornered not by the unknown creature, but by another hooded man who points a gun at him. The man orders Clyde to give him the map, but he just throws it in the cave entrance behind him. Just then, the unknown creature finally catches up to them and the man shoots Clyde dead before facing the creature. Yet, his bullets do nothing against it, so he just runs away. After a few weeks, a man named Nick, the grandson of Clyde, goes to his grandfather's hometown to see his younger brother Tristan, who arrived a couple of days earlier. According to Tristan, he received a letter from their grandfather that was written a month before he died. As Nick reads the letter, they discover that Clyde wants to give his land to the local Aboriginal tribe. But Clyde states in the letter that he is entrusting the final decision to Tristan, believing that he will know the right thing to do. Meanwhile, he wants Nick to look out for his brother and the tribe, trusting that he can be a good guide for all of them. After reading the letter, Tristan reveals to Nick that a local developer offered him a good amount of money to buy the land and he wants his opinion on the said matter. Nick just tells him that their grandfather entrusted him with the land, so it's up to him to decide. Tristan gets a little disappointed, getting no advice from his brother, and leaves Nick. He goes outside the house to bury a dead kangaroo they found earlier in the yard. Nick follows him and apologizes, saying that he just doesn't want to tell his brother what to do. Sometime later, the local tribe leader, Garvey, visits the two brothers, and since the conversation will be about the land, Nick leaves Tristan to it and gives the two privacy. As it turns out, he was the one who sent Tristan the letter after Clyde's sudden death. Garvey is hoping that Tristan will honor Clyde's will and keep the land, but Tristan states his willingness to sell the land and offers Clyde cash payment instead. The local tribe leader tries to persuade Tristan into thinking otherwise, saying that the land has been with them since the beginning and he cannot just take it away from them. Giving Tristan his contact information, Garvey tells him that he trusts him to make the right decision. Later that night, the two brothers have a drink and chat. Suddenly, their dog gets startled and they hear a roar coming from the woods. As they hear the trees falling, they decide to go inside the house and call it a night. However, they are awakened in their sleep by a rattling noise that seems to be inside the house. Taking a cricket bat as a weapon, Nick and Tristan check where the noise is coming from but find nothing but an open window. Nervous, Tristan decides to sleep in his brother's room. When morning comes, Nick and Tristan see scratch marks outside their porch. At this time, they hear a car honking and Tristan realizes that it is his friend's van. He approaches them as his friend BJ gets out of the van, asking what they are doing here. BJ claims that it is he who called and invited them to the place, yet Tristan remembers no such things. Along with BJ are their other friends Rebecca, Jason, Kate, and Anya, who happens to be Nick's ex-girlfriend. Entering the house, the group members except for Anya introduce themselves to Nick. Later, at the beginning of the night, the group of friends is already drunk. They play a game of passing a card with their mouth and Rebecca purposely drops the card to make out with Tristan. At this time, the two excuse themselves away from their friends to share a private moment. Then, BJ tells Anya to prepare the van so it will be ready for both of them to sleep in when he gets there. This upsets Anya, but she does it anyway. When she leaves, Jason comments on how easy it is for BJ to order her around and the man takes pride in it. Shortly after, they hear the creature from the woods roaring. BJ orders Jason to check it, forcing him to get a look at the woods. Meanwhile, Nick sees Anya fixing the mattress and pillows in the van. Approaching her, he talks to her and says that he is happy for her and BJ. Suddenly, their conversation is cut short when they hear Jason screaming in the woods. The two quickly run back to the group and find Kate, who's Jason's girlfriend, making out with BJ. 
While Nick goes to check on the woods, Anya just goes to Tristan and Rebecca to inform them about Jason, seeming like she's already used to BJ cheating on her. Later in the woods, they find Jason, and fortunately, nothing bad happens to him. But as Nick attends to him, he sees a pair of glowing red eyes looking at them from a distance. Due to that, he quickly helps Jason get up, and they immediately run back to the house. As soon as they get back, BJ laughs at Jason, thinking that he's just being clumsy and cowardly in the woods. Because of what happened, they decide to end the party right then and there to rest. Nick also reminds BJ and Anya to not stay in their van for the night. Although Anya agrees to sleep in the house, BJ brushes off Nick's warning and still chooses to rest in his van. The following day, Nick is in his grandfather's study room, scanning through his things. He finds a cutout of a newspaper that has an article about his grandmother's death. This picks up his interest, causing him to look further into Clyde's belongings where he finds a similar map that his grandfather was protecting on the night he died. Because of his findings, Nick plans to go into town where there is an internet connection to search about the incident involving his grandparents. In the meantime, Tristan shares a sweet moment with Rebecca and tells her that he will cook for her so he will go to the town with Anya. Just in time, they find Nick preparing to leave so they hop in his car so they can go to town together. Arriving in town, Nick goes to a coffee shop while Tristan and Anya go to the grocery store. Nick starts to search about cryptozoology where he finds an article about his grandfather's discoveries. His face shows a hint of confusion and worries as he reads the said article. It is then revealed that Clyde was a cryptozoologist who researches mythical creatures. Meanwhile, at the grocery store, Tristan and Anya talk about Nick. Both of them feel bad about Nick always choosing himself and his career over other people. Back at the house, Rebecca tells her friends that she will go swimming in the nearby billabong. Seeing her sexy body, BJ decides to follow her. While walking into the woods, Rebecca is admiring the peaceful surroundings. When she sees a creature camouflaging in a tree, she hits her foot on a root. Nervous, she runs despite her hurt foot and jumps to the billabong. Just then, BJ appears behind her, scaring her. At this time, he approaches Rebecca in the water, and Rebecca can tell that he's naked. She rejects him, saying that she's tired of waiting for him anymore and wants to be with Tristan instead. Hearing this, BJ's ego gets hurt, and he leaves Rebecca, taunting her that she will come back to him just like she always does. After a while, Nick, Tristan, and Anya are already on their way back home when Tristan asks if they could stop by the site of the local developer. Since they are on the topic, Nick tells his brother that he agrees to sell the land. Shortly after, they arrive at the site where they are greeted by John, the real estate agent that is working for the local developer who wants to buy their land. Inside, John gives Tristan the papers that he needs to sign to finalize their deal. While Tristan asks some questions regarding the contract, Nick sees a pair of night vision goggles that emit red light in John's office, and he remembers what happened last night. Also, he sees a copy of the map that his grandfather owned that is framed on the wall. Due to these red flags, Nick butts into Tristan and John's conversation, saying that they should study his contract just before signing. Confused, Tristan just agrees with his brother, and they leave the site. When they reach home, the two brothers argue as Nick insists that John is not who he claims to be. Nick tells Tristan what he saw in John's office, thinking that he's the one who snuck into their woods and stalked them. On the contrary, Tristan thinks that his brother is just being judgmental and unreasonable. Because of that, Nick decides to go back to the study room to continue his research. When Anya offers to accompany him, he gladly accepts. Concurrently, Tristan gets inside and looks for Rebecca. Kate says she went for a swim, but it's been a few hours already since she's gone. Worried, he and the others decide to look for their friend. After a few hours of searching, they find nothing and have to go back home to get flashlights because it's about to go dark already. Kate confronts BJ, asking him what he did to Rebecca, but he just brushes her off and says he did nothing wrong. In return, BJ exposes her to Jason, revealing that they were making out last night. In the house, Nick and Anya finish researching in the study room when they come across Tristan who returns and tells them about Rebecca's situation. Hearing this, Anya wants to help them, but Nick stops her, saying that he needs her help as well. As it turns out, 
he's planning to sneak inside John's police to investigate there. Using BJ's van, Nick and Anya go back to the site where they're spotted by John, who's talking with some men. John approaches the van, so Nick hides in the back while Anya deals with the man. According to her, the van gets stuck and is not starting, so she's just waiting for her fiancé to arrive, showing him an engagement ring. Luckily for them, John believes Anya's words and leaves along with those men. As soon as they're gone, Nick returns to his seat and laughs at her story about her fiancé until he realizes that the engagement ring she shows to John is the one that Nick gave him seven years ago. He apologizes, saying that when his stepfather left them, he needed to set aside himself and start providing for Tristan and their mom. As it turns out, it was Nick all along who has been sending all those financial support to his family, not his stepfather. Since Tristan was just a kid back then, he doesn't want him to think that their stepfather was a bad guy, so he puts all the money he was giving under their stepfather's name. Not knowing what to say, Anya just tells him to finish what he needs to do before John and the other men come back. Meanwhile, in the woods, Tristan pairs up with BJ, while Kate and Jason go another way to cover more ground in finding Rebecca. At this time, Jason and Kate argue about her making out with BJ when they hear something snarling near them. Seeing the creature for the first time, the two freak out and run as fast as they can. All the while, Tristan and BJ finally find Rebecca, but they don't notice that something is wrong with her, especially her eyes, which have turned all white. She hypnotizes them and tries to lure them into going to the river with her. By good fortune, the pet dog shows up and scares Rebecca away into the river, freeing the two men from hypnosis. Just then, they hear Jason and Kate screaming from the other side of the river. BJ quickly runs away while Tristan sticks around and picks up the flashlight waiting for his friends to cross the river. However, only Jason makes it as the creature drags Kate away from them. Left with no other choice, Tristan and Jason run back to the house as the creature continues roaring. Not long after, they hear a loud knock coming from the front door. Tristan slowly opens the door and is surprised to see that their stepfather, Sam, is back. And to add to the surprise, John, who turns out not to be a real estate agent, but a paramilitary, also shows up with his men. Seeing how confused Tristan is, Sam talks to him in private and tells him about the bunyip. He claims that bunyip is what killed his grandparents, so he, along with John and his men, is here to kill it and protect Tristan and his friends. When Sam asks where his other friends and Nick are, Tristan says that Nick and Anya are outside, while two women have already been taken by the creature. Hearing this, Sam goes to speak with John and says that they only have Anya as bait now. At this time, it is revealed that Sam and the others only want to kill the bunyip so they can make a lot of cash out of it. Therefore, Sam takes Tristan to the armory while John conspires with BJ and Jason, convincing them to join the hunt in exchange for a good amount of money. After everyone is briefed and prepared, Sam orders Tristan to call Anya so she can get here as soon as possible. Going back to the site, Nick enters John's office and finds photographs and sketches of bones of different creatures that are surely not normal animals. Looking further, he also discovers a camouflage suit which makes him certain that John was what he saw last night. As he gets out of John's office, he sees Garvey and the members of his tribe waiting for him. Anya asks Nick what is truly happening, to which he tells her about his grandfather being a cryptozoologist and his study about bunyips, a man-eating mythical creature that lives in the waters of Australia. Then, Garvey orders Nick and Anya to follow him into their place. Nick decides to come with them while Anya goes home to warn Tristan and the others about John, not knowing that they already had everything set up. Shortly after, Garvey begins to tell Nick the story of Biami. When the Rainbow Serpent created Earth, she bestowed a man named Biami the responsibility to protect the land and every creature living in it. One man, however, envied Biami and ate the sacred totem animals. Enraged, Biami fought the man, but the man suddenly transformed into a spirit form, which was later on known as the Bunyip. The Bunyip wanted revenge against all the tribes using its evil spirit to infest all the waters. Scared of the evil, the people asked Biami for protection, so he imprisoned it in its home for all eternity. 
However, three women decided to test Bunyip's power and went to its prison. Instead of killing them, the Bunyip gave these women eternal life and owned them forever. These three women later on became evil spirits as well, seducing everyone into their death, and they allow Bunyip to travel beyond his prison. Right now, history is repeating itself. The Bunyip already has Rebecca and Kate under his evil spell, and Anya is the only one left before the Bunyip gets freed once again. At this moment, Anya finally arrives home where she's attacked, losing consciousness. When she wakes up, she finds herself tied and gagged. Seeing her like that, Tristan asks Sam what is going on, but he's stopped by BJ. Jason tackles BJ, freeing Tristan, but John loses his patience and fires a warning shot to shut them all up. However, what shocks Tristan more is that Sam also points his gun at him. A little later, attracted by Anya, the Bunyip finally shows up and all hell breaks loose. While everyone is distracted from fighting the creature, Anya takes the opportunity to free herself and bumps into Tristan. For a moment, the paramilitary manages to catch the Bunyip, but it retaliates and kills all of the paramilitaries except Sam and John. During the commotion, Anya and Tristan try to escape, but they get separated as Anya gets tackled by John while Tristan gets into the truck where Jason and BJ are. Acting quickly, Anya escapes into the woods with John running after her. She manages to hide from him until John is killed by the Bunyip. Just as she is about to go back to the house, Sam sneaks behind her and takes her. Meanwhile, Tristan orders BJ to turn around the car so they can get Anya. However, the Bunyip is already on the trail so they can only go forward. Unfortunately, BJ loses control and the vehicle crashes, killing Jason and leading to the capture of Tristan and BJ. After a while, Nick finally gets home only to find no one there. When morning comes, Garvey arrives at the house, planning to help Nick save Tristan and the others by luring the Bunyip into its cave. On the other hand, Sam also arrives in the Bunyip's cave, offering Anya as bait. He reveals to Anya that he set everything up from killing Clyde to hiring John and putting everyone on death row just for him to get close to the Bunyip and kill it for money. As the Bunyip and the two women arrive, Sam hides in the corner, waiting for the right moment to attack. Anya tries to wake her friends by calling their names, but to no avail. Then, the Bunyip starts to possess Anya just in time as Nick and Garvey arrive in the cave. Upon seeing Sam hiding, Nick attacks him and the two men brawl. At first, Nick struggles, but he manages to turn the tide around and electrocute Sam using his taser. Meanwhile, Garvey uses his boomerang and hits Bunyip's eye, finally freeing Anya, Rebecca, and Kate from its spell. Nick then takes the opportunity to guide them out of the cave. However, he cannot just leave yet because he still needs to save Tristan. Promising Anya that he will meet her later, Nick comes back further into the cave to free Tristan. Unfortunately for BJ, the Bunyip already ate him earlier. Seeing his brother come back for him, Tristan apologizes as he finally realized that it was Nick who was helping him all along. But as they are about to leave, Sam shows up and shoots Nick. Knowing that the mess will not end as long as Sam is alive, Nick instructs Tristan on what route to take to get out of the tunnel. Tristan does not want to leave him, but Nick assures him that he will meet him at the house. Just then, Tristan escapes and Nick charges at Sam. While Garvey is battling with the Bunyip, the evil of their land, Nick is also battling the evil in their family, which is Sam. In the end, both Nick and Garvey sacrifice themselves, trapping each other's devil further into the cave as the Bunyip's physical body explodes, closing the entrance to its cave. Seeing the explosion, Tristan tries to run back for his brother, but it's already too late. Unwillingly, Tristan comes back to the house alone. And when Anya doesn't see Nick, she knows that he has once again sacrificed himself for his younger brother. The movie ends with Tristan, Rebecca, Anya, and Kate leaving the place safe but permanently wounded in their hearts. Devil Beneath is a film that could have been a lot more. The build-up for the Bunyip and the thrill it gives when it was just stalking the characters are great, but upon entering the final act, the tension and thrills start to fall apart. 
The conflict with the Bunyip itself is already enough, the entry of the paramilitary into the plot on the other hand kind of ruins the experience. Overall, Devil Beneath is okay if you just want to watch a movie about a certain local myth.